Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Miss Coker, live at the Saturday Morning Races, sponsored by Math. It does the body good. Today we have Reagan and Jackson racing, and I think they're just getting ready to get started. Let's take a look. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on your marks, get set, go. Now we are watching closely to see how long it will take both of them to return to the point that they started from. Let's wait and see when they come back. Oh, I think there was a tie! Ladies and gentlemen, it appears that there was a tie for speed. So the next step is to look at the total distance each driver traveled. Stay tuned for more information. Boys and girls, here are the actual times from Saturday morning's race. Both Jackson and Reagan arrived at the finish line in 54 seconds. As a tiebreaker, I decided the winner would be the person who actually traveled the longer track. As you notice in the video, Jackson went to the left while Reagan went to the right. They did not end up traveling the same distance. Jackson traveled three-fourths of a mile. Reagan traveled four-eighths of a mile. Our job is now to determine who traveled further and who will be the winner of Saturday morning's race. In order to figure out who traveled further, Jackson or Reagan, it's helpful to create a visual representation to actually see Jackson's distance and Reagan's distance side by side. For today's lesson, you will need paper, scissors, and a ruler. If you need to, press pause and get these materials now. Once you have your paper, you will need to draw seven parts so you can create some strips of paper. After you draw your parts, cut them into strips. Now that I have my strips, I'm going to use these to represent different fractions. We won't use all of these to solve the Jackson and Reagan problem, but we will use these today and again tomorrow to solve other problems. This first strip right here will represent one hole. So I have written one hole on that strip. This next strip right here will represent halves. Let's take that whole strip and fold it into two equal parts creating halves. Check to make sure both parts are equal in size. Once you have a nice crisp fold, open it up, trace your fold, and label the parts. This strip right here will represent thirds, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's go to the fourths. In order to partition this equally into fourths, I will start by folding the strip in half. Right now, I only have halves, but if I fold each of those halves in half, I will get my four equal parts for my fourths. We have our whole halves. This will be thirds, fourths. This will be sixths. We don't do fifths in third grade, but I'll come back to the sixths. Let me go to the eighths. This one right here. Notice I am not doing every single denominator. I'm only doing fractions that third graders work with. For my eighths, I'm going to begin by folding the paper in half and half again like we did with the fourths. Right now we have four equal parts. If we fold it in half once more, we will get eight equal parts representing eighths. Make sure to label your parts and trace your folds. To fold thirds, imagine a burrito. Try to get each part of that burrito as equal as possible so you can see one, two, three parts to that burrito. Once each part of that burrito is equal in size, Pinch it down so you have your folds. And there are your thirds. Be sure to trace your folds and label your parts. Now that we've done our thirds, it'll be a little bit easier to do our sixths. Again, for the sixths, you're going to start by folding this into thirds. Imagine your burrito. Try to get each part of your burrito as equal in size as possible. When you have it, smush it down. And there are my thirds. Now. If I fold my thirds in half, I now have six. Make sure to trace your folds and label your parts.
Now this last bar is not actually related to a third grade fraction. However, we will need it for a problem that we will be solving tomorrow, so I thought we'll go ahead and make it today. This last one we are actually going to fold into twelfths, and I don't think we even used twelfths until around, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade, but we're going to do it today, boys and girls. Start by folding this strip like a burrito. Try to get three equal parts as equal as possible. Once you feel like all three parts are equal in size, you can smush it down. There are my thirds. Next, fold it in half to get your sixth. Again, try to make it as equal as possible. I now have my sixth. Lastly, fold it in half one last time. Make those folds super crisp. I now have twelfths. Go ahead and trace your folds, label your parts. And there you have all of your fractions. You know, it feels really good to have visual representations in front of us. I tell kids of all ages, I even tell adults, that as mathematicians, you really have to visualize or see the work that you are doing. So drawing pictures or using models will always help you better solve a problem. Now that we have our models, we need to go back to our problem. Remember, Jackson traveled 3 fourths of a mile and Reagan traveled 4 eighths of a mile. At this point, pause the video and use your models to determine who traveled further, Jackson at 3 fourths of a mile or Reagan at 4 eighths of a mile. As you notice, I removed all of the fraction bars that we don't need to solve this problem. At this point, I'm able to focus on Jackson, who has traveled 3 fourths of a mile, and Reagan, who has traveled 4 eighths of a mile. If I line both of these fractions up to start at the same point, you can see that Jackson actually traveled a greater distance. 